Hello everyone, this is Anushka Jain, CA and ACCA. I'm back again with a video to discuss the concept of working capital management through a question which appeared in the financial management paper of ACCA in March, June 2020 attempt. The question is Pumas Company. I'm sure by the end of this video, you're going to have a good strength on the concepts of working capital management. So stay tuned till the end. Let's begin. Pumas Company plans to expand its business operations by opening several new outlets at a cost of $8 million, financed by an issue of loan notes. The company currently generates credit sales of $80.768 million before cost of sales of $27.7 million. All sales are on credit. The current statement of financial position of Pumas Company is as follows. Okay, so they have given us assets, non-current assets and current assets comprising of inventories, trade receivables, cash and cash equivalents. And we also have their equity and liabilities position, equity comprising of equity share capital and reserves. Then we have uh, the non-current liabilities, the current liabilities and total equity and liabilities. Pumas company expects that the expansion will increase credit sales by 18.7% with cost of sales being 33% of credit sales and profit after tax being $6.818 million. Non-current assets will increase by 11%. The bank has demanded that Pumas company's overdraft be reduced to $3 million and the company expects its cash balance to be $0.7 million after the expansion. Pumas Company has been receiving complaints from its suppliers about the late payment and the company plans to improve its working capital management as part of the expansion. It expects that the following working capital ratios will result. Inventory holding period will become 50 days. Trade receivables payment period will become 60 days. Trade payables payment period will become 60 days. The finance director of Pumas Company wishes to investigate how the expansion will change the following ratios. Trade payables payment period, current ratio, and revenue to networking capital ratio, defining networking capital as inventory plus trade receivables less trade payables. Assume there are 360 days in a year. What you are required to do is, number one, prepare a forecast statement of financial position for Pumas Company. And calculate the effect of the proposed expansion on the working capital ratios listed by the finance director. Then you have to discuss the ways in which implementing the proposed changes in working capital represent changes in working capital investment policy for Pumas Company and changes in working capital funding policy for Pumas Company. So very interesting question, which covers a lot of concept areas. So we are going to cover that in detail in our solution. Let's head straight to the solution now. So the first part is with respect to the forecast statement of financial position. Non-current assets, they grew by 11%, right? And... Uh, we have 54,070 into 1.11. Okay, 54,070 into 1.11. Then we have current assets, inventory. So for that, we come to a note. I always recommend in my videos that please make notes wherever possible. Do not clutter your main answer. Make the life of the examiner easy by providing nicely framed pointers. Okay, always keep that in mind. So note number one, revenue. Revenue is going to increase by 18.7% as mentioned in the question. So currently it is 80,768. So it will become 80,768 into the factor of growth, which is 1.187. So we get that the revenue would become 
95,872. So the cost of sales, which is 33%, will be what? 95,872 into 33%. That is 31,638. Inventory holding period is going to be 50 days. Receivable period is going to be 60 days. And payables period is going to be 60 days, as mentioned in the question. So trade receivables will be what? Credit sales divided by 360 into 60. Inventory will be what? Cost of sales divided by 360 into 50. And trade payables would be the cost of sales divided by 360 into 60. In the absence of information about credit purchases, calculate trade payables using cost of sales. That was note number one, which helped us to calculate the trade receivables, inventory, and trade payables. So let's come back, come up here. So we have our inventory ready, 4394. Then trade receivables are ready, 15979. And cash balance was given directly in the question as 700. So that makes up our asset side of the balance sheet, right? So the total assets become 1090. Then comes the equity and liabilities side. So equity is given as 6,000. This is directly given. Then reserves. So let's go to a note to do the calculations. Note 2. Opening balance of reserves was given as 34,000. So this was given in the question. Profit after tax was also given as 6818. So the total reserves would become 640,818. Right? So we go up and we link it with the reserves calculation here. 40,818. So that makes up a total of 46,818. Then comes non-current liabilities. Now, non-current liabilities given in the question was 18,000. And then 8,000, that is towards the new expansion cost, which is being done through loan notes. So, loan notes are non-current liabilities. So, they are being added over here. 8 million or 8,000 because we are doing the calculation in dollar thousand. So, we have written 8,000. That makes it... 26,000. Okay. Then comes current liabilities. So we have trade payables already calculated. 5273. And overdraft was given in the question as 3 million or 3,000. So we add them all up. Equity, the non-current liabilities and the current liabilities. So we get 81,091. So we see that the balance sheet is slightly untallied. So for that, what we do is 81,091 minus this. Let's find out the balancing figure and which is 0.52. So what we do is just as the balancing figure, we add it. We could have added it anywhere. We have added it in non-current assets. So that makes our balance sheet total tally, right? So that completes the first part of the question to make the forecast statement of financial position. A very interesting, you know, presentation and calculation that we have just done. I hope it is clear now. Moving on. Second part was about the calculation of the ratios. Okay. Second part was about calculation of a few ratios, I would always suggest to give headings wherever possible in the question while solving because it gives a clear indication to the examiner what has been covered there. So, calculation of ratios. First, we have pre-expansion and post-expansion. So we see that the trade payables pre-expansion as given in the question is 9690. This is as it is given in the question, okay? 
and cost of sales was also given as 27,700. Okay. So, when we calculate the trade payables payment period, what would that be? 9690 divided by 27,700 into 360. That's my trade payables payment period currently. That is pre-expansion. And post-expansion, it is what? 60 days. This is nothing but what we covered over here. 60 days, right? Then current assets existing is 17,120 and current liabilities is 13,190. So when we calculate the current ratio, that comes as 17,120 divided by 13,190, which is 1.30. And then we use the current statement of financial position to find out what are my current assets. This is my total. And my current liabilities are at 8273. So when I calculate the current ratio, now it is 2.55. So that is the second ratio which was asked in the question. Right? Then the third one is what? Revenue by networking capital. That is what they have asked us. So for that, we calculate the necessary items. And that is first of all, revenue. Okay, we have the revenues given and calculated for post-expansion period. Receivable, inventory, trade payable. Similarly, here we have them already. So networking capital, we can find out easily. The networking capital formula was defined in the question. So we have used it as it is. So that gives us the revenue by networking capital. Here, pre-expansion is 12.18 and post-expansion it has become 6.35. Okay. So that is about the calculation of the different ratios which were asked in the question. Okay. So that completes our part 1 and 2 of part A of the question. Now part B is also very interesting. So let us cover that. So we have covered the preparation for 10 marks. Now for the balance 10 marks, what we do is, let's see. Discuss the ways in which implementing the proposed changes in working capital represent number one was changes in working capital investment policy and second was working capital funding policy. So just as a self note for your understanding only right now. Okay, so we have. Just to help you understand the topics, working capital investment strategy can be of two types, aggressive or conservative. Aggressive working capital investment strategy helps to keep inventory and receivables as low as possible and it maximizes the payables by increasing the credit period. Whereas a conservative working capital investment strategy focuses on allowing high levels of inventory and receivables, that is the opposite of aggressive, and to make payment to the payables on time. Now coming to working capital finance strategy. So we have the aggressive, the conservative and the matching policies. So what is an aggressive working capital finance strategy? Minimal use of long term source of finance for meeting the networking capital needs. Use of cheaper short term sources of finance. It is a risky policy as short term finance may not be available when needed. A conservative policy is where there is a high level use of long-term sources of finance for meeting the networking capital. It is a safe but an expensive strategy. So you can see and feel the difference between the investment strategy and the finance strategy. Investment strategy is how the money is being invested and finance strategy is from where and how the investment is being financed. And the third type of strategy here is matching policy where the 
financing of permanent current assets is met through long term finance and fluctuating current assets through short term finance so we can summarize this in a short table over here you know if it is a conservative policy you finance the non current assets through long term sources yes current assets permanent yes and current assets fluctuating also are partially financed through long term sources of finance that is the conservative strategy policy b is an aggressive policy whereby the non current assets are always financed through long term sources of finance current assets permanent also are partially financed and current assets fluctuating are not financed through long term sources of finance and policy c is the matching policy which is in between here the non current assets and the permanent current assets are financed through long term sources of finance and fluctuating current assets are financed through short term sources they are not financed through long term sources so that is the entire concept of working capital investment and finance strategy i hope this table helps you in your understanding of the topic now let us move on to the question properly so first is about the working capital investment strategy it refers to the level of current assets used to support the business so this type of a commentary you'll have to make because it is a discussion based question you don't get marks only for calculations but presenting your thoughts and discussion properly it involves a balance between liquidity and profitability a company may follow aggressive or conservative now we have covered that in detail aggressive or conservative working capital investment strategy comparing the pre and post revenue by net working capital and revenue by current assets can help to understand the working capital investment policy changes if any so we have already done the calculation of revenue by net working capital above right and we can see as a result of decreased reliance on trade payables revenue by net working capital has changed from 12.18 to 6.35 this is a dramatic change in policy and may create cash flow issues in near future if the company continues to grow so we can see that the reliance on trade payables has reduced drastically and which is leading to a decrease in the ratio and it may create cash flow issues so that type of a comment you can mention here then we can also calculate revenue by current assets only so we see this shows that no significant changes occurred as a result of implementing the proposed changes in working capital as revenue by current assets has changed only very slightly from 4.72 to 4.55 this means that current assets have increased in line with the increase in sales right so that is the type of answer you can give for the first part of the question which was about working capital investment strategy moving on to the second part which is working capital finance strategy so working capital finance policy may be of three types as we discussed above now we are elaborating it properly that was just as a self note for understanding it can be of three types conservative matching and aggressive depending on the extent to which fluctuating current assets and permanent assets are financed by long term sources of finance a conservative working capital finance strategy involves the use of long term funds to finance permanent as well as fluctuating current assets this is a low risk but an expensive strategy so it reduces profitability now you are talking about each one of these policies in detail right an aggressive capital finance strategy involves use of short term funds to finance fluctuating current assets and also a portion of permanent current assets this is a high risk but a cheap strategy so it increases profitability then thirdly a matching working capital finance strategy involves the use of short term funds to finance fluctuating current assets and long term funds to finance permanent current assets so while there is insufficient information to determine the levels of fluctuating and permanent current assets 
the proposed expansion shows a substantial increase in long-term funds. We can see that here. Just let's move to the balance sheet. We can see that there is a substantial increase in the long-term funds from before. Okay. Before expansion, 77% of current assets are financed from current liabilities. So we can, we have done all the calculations over here. Current assets and current liabilities before and after is mentioned and current assets financed by current liabilities. We can see earlier it was 77% and now it has become just 39%. So before expansion, 77% of current assets are financed by current liabilities. However, after expansion, only 39% of current assets would be financed by current liabilities and balance 61% by long-term sources of finance. Therefore, the proposed changes in the working capital uh, represent a movement from aggressive working capital strategy to conservative working capital strategy. Okay. So as I was showing you that the you know long-term funds have increased a lot. So detailed calculation is given over here. So decrease in current liabilities is 4917. Increase in current assets is 3953. And increase in long-term funds is 14,818. So we can see that there is a movement to a conservative working capital strategy. Very, very important. Why? Because there is less reliance on current liabilities to finance the current assets. Okay. So that was your answer for the second part of the question involving the working capital finance strategy that also wraps up the solution to this interesting question, which is Pumas Company. I'm sure you would have learned a lot by watching this video and I'm sure it will help you in your exams because working capital as a topic is regularly tested. So I'm sure this will help you ace your papers of financial management of ACCA. Thank you so much for staying tuned till the end. Please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more such informative videos. Thank you.